Welcome to the Industry Transformation Podcast Series. Today our podcast is called Trust in the COVID World. I am Bruce Dane. I'm the Executive Director for the Industry Transformation Coalition, and I'm thrilled to have my two guests. I have a Marta Belter. Hello, Marta. Hello. And I have, and I have Aaron Sherinian. Hello, Aaron. Hi there. If, if, we, if we jump coast, if we go back to the West Coast, and we think of, of the technology companies, and, and I think that it's, you, you, you read about it and you see it, and there's so much bashing going on of big tech, but the truth is, I love it. I can't get enough, right? And, and the ads they feed me, I love the ads they feed me, right? They know me so well. So, so I, I actually feel like they kind of get a bad rap, and maybe, maybe it's deserved, maybe it's not. But tell, tell us your experience in working in, in that industry, in the epicenter of technology, what is what is your take on intentions? Yeah, well, you know, I think one thing that's really interesting about the discourse around big tech right now yeah. is that um, there is a assumption that there is no alternative, like that the internet has to continue to operate with centralized intermediaries. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually not necessarily the case. Um, so um, one of the uh, foundations uh, I serve as board chair for is the Falcon Foundation for the Decentralized Web. And you know, the idea there is um, thinking about an entirely new internet infrastructure that doesn't necessarily have to rely on centralized intermediaries and um, instead can be more of a uh, decentralized uh, type of technology. And um, so I think it's, it's uh, an area where when you're talking about the you know, problems with big tech that, and the discourse around that, um, it's, a, it's an under, uh, I think, uh, appreciated uh, potential path forward. And you know, can I, can I say something about that, Bruce? Because yeah. it's an industry, again, being on that coast, that goes that I happen to come from. So I, I, I happen to be excited by this renaissance of, of ideas that is coming out there. But, you know, as Marta's speaking about it, I'm realizing that it is a self-disruptive promise. The idea that we, we are going to disrupt ourselves. We're going to continue to, to, to invent it. And that means that the trust conversation is going to have to be continual. If Excel, like tech has accelerated everything, yeah. the tech is probably accelerating the trust conversation because as Marta mentioned, it doesn't have to be just this. We haven't seen the end of technological innovation. We just saw the beginning. So I'm in so many ways, I wonder if, if technology and the, the tech sector is putting us on a new footing when it comes to trust, because we're probably going to be using platforms in a very few years that, that my kids will never have interacted with, right? I mean, that's just the nature of it. I loved your story at the beginning, Marta, about, uh, about certain platforms that, you know, I don't know that my kids will ever will, uh, will know about. And it's just moving that fast. That means that, do I trust you? What are you doing with my data? What are you doing with, with the information that you manage about me? That's, that's a conversation that has gone from, from zero miles an hour to 60 miles an hour in the public uh, square uh, right now. And I, and I hope it continues. Yeah. I also think, Mark, it speaks to what Aaron was saying, that, that other comp companies are going to be the ones that are solving these problems. We're going to be going to companies, and these are the organizations that I think are going to give us the answer. Not the answers, but are going to give us, going to give us some the, the steps forward. I think that's I think that's true in many ways. Um, it, interestingly enough, you know, it, it, there's also I think a um, a space for less uh, less organized uh, organization, <laughs> i.e., um, you know, in the open source software world, um, it's there are a lot of you know companies participating in that space. There are also a lot of individuals, and you have projects that are a lot that are themselves decentralized, right? And uh -huh. and where you have a lot of uh, and different potential organizational structures. So I think, um, you know, it, it's not necessarily true that, you know, centralized institutions are necessary to, to create really interesting technology um, or to, um, you know, move technology forward. Oh, that's interesting that you talk about individuals because if you think about, okay, so we go back to that study and on the bottom part of that list is, is the tobacco industry. And they're like, do you trust the tobacco industry? No. But do I trust Aaron? I trust Aaron, right? I trust Aaron a lot, right? And I know your team. Like I trust, I trust these individuals. And I think there is that idea of of once you you really get to know 
who these people, like not just the company, but the people that are running the company, the people that are making it all happen, I think some trust built, it gets built there. And I think there's a, there's an esprit de corps that happens in organizations in, in particular moments in time. And, and, and you'll, you'll read about some of this in, in the paper as we rely on each other, as we rely, as media relies on, on governments for correct information and the public relies on the media for getting it and industries rely on, 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 on their regulators to, to have smart regulation that gets products to the um, amount of people in appropriate ways. I mean, there's all of this trust that's happening in the system, but at the end of the day, it's really about the people and culture and trust are two things that cannot be separated. There's no doubt about it. You mentioned it, Bruce, I'm glad you did. You know, if you were visiting uh, one of our offices, an office building where, where I, uh, pre-COVID, I was quite a bit, um, I was always struck by this mural in one of the, the staircases that said, companies don't transform companies, people transform companies. And, and that idea that you have to trust your colleagues. Um, today, we know that the rising generations will only go to work for a company if they feel that their purpose is going to be honored. Yeah, yeah. And so I think that all of that is at a premium because if the company is really going to change, we know that they have to have the right people on board. Um, I'm grateful that there's trust between us. It's, likewise, it's reciprocal, by the way. But I think that trusting, trusting your colleagues as you are onboarded onto an organization is just as important and trusting the advisors and making sure that you have a trusted relationship. It's always tricky, right? But the, the relationship to trust those who are gonna help keep your organization on course. Uh, in the United States of America, uh, as, a, as a diplomat, I saw that as important where many organizations were there to help yeah, maintain yeah. their trust by keeping, keeping organizations honest. And those organizations exist around the world. If they do so in a respectful, civilized, data-focused way, I think that trust can be maintained between people, even if you're on opposite sides of the table. Oftentimes people resort to other things and there's the fake news phenomenon and there's misinformation and vitriol. If we, if we rise above that and if we can make our exchanges about, about data, not in a disimpassioned way, but in a, in a way that is just informed. Mm -hmm. And if we can make it about trusting that the person's intentions are are what they say they are, then I think that's when we can make success. I think that's what's required for our industry at scale. I know that's what's required for the tech industry at scale. I think to be seen in some of these other industries, just like you mentioned, where the source of the problem is probably residing in that same company, or sorry, the source of the solution rather, excuse me, is probably residing inside of that same company. I think about, you know, it took the participation of the automotive industry to ensure that we had seatbelts in every car. Yeah, kind of change that is made. It takes air, the airline industry to be part of the safeties, the safety measures that are implemented to ensure that our, sa our, our skies are safe, working with government regulators, et cetera. So, I mean, it's just oftentimes they have to be in there. Large or small. Marta, I take your point. I heard you. It's not just about the big organizations. It's also in, in the innovative startup mode where, where if that trust exists, I think we're going to get to better results. So, so what's so interesting is, so if, if I, I love what you said, and, and I, I totally agree. And I think that I agree with actually everything that's been said here. It's, it's these industries that, and the companies and the people in the industries that are coming up with the solutions to the issues that we, we've, we encounter. Now, in, in the COVID era, the, the tech industry, well, specifically social media, let's be more precise, is a Petri dish for a lot, and it's a Petri dish for companies to to stand up and say what they're going to do and it's a it's a real it's a real place for them to experiment with with how the public and the consumer is going to interact to police themselves to ensure that there's regulation and this conversation about regulation right now in a covid era i think you're seeing a fascinating petri dish and we're going to look back on on how we came through the pandemic in an accelerated way or if we actually stumbled because of how we interacted with some of those companies. I also think um, that we're going to see, and, and I think this is changing every day, but the news media has been looking at itself in with a, it's taking a long, hard look at its, at its operating model, yeah. uh, how it makes money, how it attracts our attention and how it informs us. I think also we're seeing this is a moment where those things, because our panel discussion today is about a COVID era, I think the news media's role is one that's under under scrutiny and 
much of it has to be self-examined. You know, what yeah. are, who are we going to be as we talk about what a vaccine is, the safety of the vaccine, how it can be distributed, how one might have access to it. I mean, they're on the front lines because they're on the front lines of distribution of information. I hope that what we'll find is that we saw step companies stepping up, right? Whether it be with uh, with PPE, the, the protective equipment at the beginning, with donations to make sure that businesses stayed afloat, uh, support to small business, et cetera. The, the, the corporate parts of our society stepped up in, in the first instance. And I think what we'll see now is some real stars rise above because they stayed consistent to it and they innovated while the world is innovating. We're not gonna be going back to work the same way we were before. Yeah, And agreed. I think that will build trust in companies as we see those who have decided we're gonna do it this way because it's safe for you and it's good for business, not just the one or the other. So let, let's pivot a little bit. So, so we were talking about um, a little bit about some of the issues that we've seen and the, the, some of the trust that maybe we've lost. And we talk about maybe some of the industries that are, are, have room to, room to do better. But let's talk about what do companies, what do these organizations need to do to build trust going forward? Let's, let's turn it over to you, Marta. What, what do you think that what, what these companies or any organization needs to do to build that trust? Yeah, so I mean, in, 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 the, in my corner of the world, yes. um, in the tech industry, like one of the areas where, you know, we talk a lot about um, trust is um, how, how these companies are using your data and whether yeah. and under what circumstances they're going to hand it over to the government. Um, and, and I think that the thing that has been very big in, in, in the tech space has been transparency reports, just, just using the example of, you know, uh, civil liberties, um, reports about how, um, you know, what, what these companies' policies are, you know, if they get a government request, are they just going to turn it over? Yeah. Or, you know, are they going to inform you? Are they going to um, allow you to uh, uh, respond? Um, are, and, and also just how many of these types of requests from the government are they receiving? Um, and those types of reports, I think, go a long way um, in um, making it possible for you to, as a user, sort of at least have some sense um, of how your data might be used when it comes to uh, government requests. And I think, um, you know, it goes a really far way in terms of transparency and trust. Yeah, um, I, I love it. And I think that it, it appears to go back to that transparency. Like, is, like you, you, you broached it a, little, a few minutes ago about transparency being really a big part of tech's, tech's trust that they're building, right, with, with their consumers. And, and if I can interject, Bruce, I think also their willingness to be in the middle of the social issues. There's a, I'm actually going to quote, I'm going to quote from the paper if you'll, if you'll allow me to, because I love Please. this line. So the, the paper lays out, you know, it's understandable that some businesses in this COVID era are going to be tempted to remain on the sidelines of the duration. And then it continues. Uh, the evidence is, is clear, though, that the sidelines are no safe place for businesses in 2020. And that's the case for the future. I mean, the sidelines aren't any place where the companies will be called out. You ask the question, what can they do to build yeah. trust as they move forward? If you're going to sit on the sidelines, the customer will remember, the stakeholder will remember, your regulator will remember. I mean, there's too much to do right now for businesses to sit out and say, oh, I'm going to cautiously study this so that I can, uh, you know, uh, do, do no harm is probably going to do a lot of harm. You need to be in there because there's a lot to do for everyone. No, they're, 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 people are demanding to know the position the companies are taking. I mean, I, I, you, I, you broached it, I think, earlier, Aaron, and I, I think that like, there's, there's, there's no safe space on the sidelines. There isn't, and there's a lot of the, uh, the voice, the share of voice that a company has because we interact with companies in different ways, and it's unexpected. It's not just at the cash register. It's not just when we're you know, purchasing something online. We interact with, with and the platforms that Marta's mentioning, and, and your industry fascinates me, Marta, because you're talking about uh, things that are disrupting that current industry where the only thing that doesn't change is that people are in the middle of those transactions, right? And, and so as they're radically open and transparent, there's still people there. So that's the one thing that won't change is that people are, people's lives are going to depend on what these companies are, are doing because governments can't do it all. They never have been, they never will be able to. And civil society, the NGO sector, as important and as, and as vast as their influence and impact can be, they can't do it alone. It really takes it takes uh, you know that partnership between all three where the corporate sector has a huge part in it. Let's talk about PMI specifically. What what, what is PMI? What what 
does PMI have to do in the near future? In the, co in the COVID era, it's, you know, I'll speak personally if I can, because we were talking about people impacts, but I was, it was important for me that the company stood up very quickly and talked about the, its people. And that meant it started with our protection and not asking us to do anything that would be putting us in harm's way. And I, and I know while that's probably a given for most employees, I think we should recognize that in 2020, the world pretty much had a conversation where we were ensuring that people weren't in harm's way. Something yeah. happened. Historically speaking for our world's history, I'm, I'm grateful that we're there. We need to do more, right? And, and there were missteps along the way, of course, from, from various actors in society. And that'll be debated for years to come. But first and foremost, there was that people commitment. And then secondly, you know, whether it be making sure that people are aware of and have information about, uh, about various uh, issues, including one, uh, uh, an activity that we're very proud of to make sure that people were aware of, of uh, the dangers of illicit uh, protective equipment and that that can be dangerous. But then more importantly, having an open conversation with our business partners about what it would mean going forward. And then ultimately to the, to the big business transformation promise of helping to achieve a smoke-free future and helping the, if you, if you look at the statistics, potentially more than a billion people that will still be smoking yeah. cigarettes in the near future unless a better alternative is made available. And the only way to, to make sure that that happens at the appropriate scale is to make sure that the information appropriately gets to those legally aged people. So I think that there, it shows you in the midst of a crisis, I'm speaking for the company that I represent today, but any organization has to be doing it at the people level, for the people it employs, for its suppliers and business stakeholders, the regulators, and of course, ultimately to the people that you want to, to be talking to. And, and that if your purpose veers during a crisis, I also believe that people will remember and something for us that was important was remembering that that smoke-free pledge, the promise uh, about moving to a, a, and the goal of moving to a smoke-free future, it was important that we come out of this pandemic with that, uh, with that goal steadfast. Yeah, it's interesting to me how 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 both sectors, your organization and tech, the, it's it's what I hear from both of you is providing something better, a better option, a better alternative. Right as as part of going forward, and I know we are just about out of time, Marta. I want to I want to um, sort of get your final thoughts on this before we we we, uh, we say goodbye. What 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 else do you want to add to this conversation? Well, I mean, I think I think the big sort of zoom out <laughs> piece is um, is really that um, when it, at least in again speaking speaking on the tech side of things. Um, one of the things that's, that's so interesting about the technology that's being built right now is that um, you don't actually have to trust any institution or trust any um, individual person um, in a lot of the technology that's being built um, in, in blockchain and cryptocurrency um, and the decentralized web, um, you can just look yourself at the code uh, without needing any uh, intermediaries whatsoever. And I think that's um, a really interesting, uh, a really interesting potential future when we're thinking about trust. Interesting. And, and um, Aaron, that sounds to me like all that, all the science and all the, um, all the reports that PMI is putting out, it, it sounds, it sounds kind of familiar. Well, it sounds to me like, and Marta, I'm not an expert in your field at all, but as, as we've learned together, and I've learned a lot from you today, uh, the trust code has got to be open and people have to be uh, you can't crack it until you know it. No. And I think that's what's, what I've seen here is that in, in order to, to achieve trust, people have to understand how it's built, how it's lost. And then people have to be willing to put themselves out in there and saying, okay, I'm going to be part of building it back. And it's not going to be immediate. It's not going to be immediate. Yeah. It's not going to be free, but it's definitely something that, that we can all get done. Fabulous. Thank you so much. I think this conversation is a it's, it's, a, it's a hard topic in my estimation. Trust is a difficult thing to get your arm around. And I appreciate the two of you bringing your perspective and your views into the conversation. It's been an education for me. So thank you so much. Thank you, Marta. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. This is oh, fun. It's, it's so good to have two of my favorite people. Thank you for being here. And so what I'll do is I'll put uh, contact information in for both of you. Marta, I'll put your, your bio page for uh, Ropes Gray down below. Aaron, I'll put your LinkedIn page. And we'll Thanks. also have a white, this, this white paper is so good. And frankly, it's just so candid and well-written. 
I will have a button down below too where you can download the, the, the white paper, no charge of course, and then you can read the, the entire text. We hope, let's get a conversation going. You've helped us spark it here. I hope that we can continue it moving forward with your all the members of, of your organization, Bruce, and with people who have something to offer. I've, I've learned a lot today. This has been great. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Marta. Thank you. Okay.